With the first half of 2024 officially behind us, let's have a flip through my first half of the year journal and see what everything looked like in use after the pen and what was in between the layouts that maybe you didn't get to see. Hi, it's Erin. Thank you for joining me for this little flip through. For the first six months of 2024, I used this sage green reverie journal from Mellow Days. This one has watercolor paper and I'll give you a full review of the journal at the end of the video. I think this one has ended up the chunkiest of any of my bullet journals ever. This is an unprecedented level of chunky for me. You'll see why when we flip through, so let's get into it. Also, I just wanted to mention some parts of this journal are blacked out for my privacy. I wanted to give a big shout out to Blue Caribou for suggesting that I black things out instead of blurring them. We're gonna do that going forward. So if you see anything that's got black paper over it, just know that's redacted and for my eyes only. I had some fun stickers that I just thought were adorable. So I ended up popping them in the inside cover of the journal here. And this washi tape that I used partly to keep my grid spacing guide over here tore at the edge of the roll. So I just chucked the rest of it in here because it's a really pretty William Morris design and I liked it a lot my name on this side and then we get into the initial setup for the journal I made a grid spacing guide on a separate bit of paper that I cut out from here actually in case you aren't aware because this journal has watercolor paper I decided it would be fun to challenge myself to try and use paint in every single setup that I did for the first half of the year and that was most definitely a challenge. So this is actually gouache paint with gold paint marker stamped over the top. I was going for a very fairy tale storybook vintage kind of a vibe. I really like how it came out. This one was very easy. So this one, not so bad. I will have all of these setups linked in the description down below for you too, in case you wanna see how any of them came together. You know, when you're going into a new project and you're all excited about it and bright eyed and bushy tailed, that didn't stick around too long for me with this painting project, unfortunately. It's my future log, which I have somewhat used. I find that this is really good for just writing everything down at the beginning of the year, but I don't tend to come back and fill it out a great deal. I did not set a single goal for 2024, but I have decided just in the past like two weeks that I think I want to set some goals for the rest of the year. And I don't think I want them to be anything too ambitious. I think I want them to be kind of frivolous, honestly. So I've set myself a silly little goal. I want to be able to do the splits by Christmas. Let's see how we go with that. I haven't filled out the last little bits of information on my social tracker at this point, but that's okay. I can still add that stuff. I've written it down, it's just not in my journal. Here's an example of some redacted information. This is my cash flow tracker. This is all my financial data. I like to keep that stuff private, as I'm sure you can understand. I haven't filled out the June column here because I did in fact start a separate journal to track this stuff recently. I have a whole video about that in case you'd like to see. I'll link it up here and in the description. So I didn't really need this in my journal anymore. You won't find one of these in my new journal because it has its own now. The content planner becomes an absolute chicken scratch mess, but that's good because that means I'm using it. I'm okay with it looking messy if it means I'm using it. These couple of pages turned out being really fun too. The monthly reset, I didn't keep up with as much as I would have liked, but I did keep up with it somewhat, so I'll take it, that's a win. And the highlights page, I don't know if I need this necessarily anymore because I've actually started memory keeping in my journal in this past six months and I'm really enjoying that, so I probably don't need a dedicated highlights page anymore because I'm including that in kind of a different way, but I did fill it out and it was fun. The swatches is a funny spread because I really thought I would need it for swatching those paints, like the gouache paints that I have. I have some watercolors, I have some gold watercolors. I really thought it would be necessary to have that on hand for some reason. And then I swatched my pens and I never swatched the paints and it was fine. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. We're getting into January now, and this was definitely jumping in the deep end, but I loved setting this theme up. I felt like it really pushed me, but because all the paintings, I painted each of these with gouache, tiny little paintings, and then smacked a paper frame over the top that I've glued in there. I wanted something that kind of felt like walking through an art gallery, and I do feel like I achieved that pretty well. And I really pushed myself with the painting, and some of them are better than others, <laughs> but, I had a good time. I did enjoy this one. And I got outside my comfort zone with colors quite a bit here too. More blacked out spending things. I had this page left over and I wasn't sure what to do with it. And I tried to use it to set some routines and then I did not follow the routines. Here's my attempt at keeping my trackers on my weeklies. So I was trying this Dutch door situation where the weekly planning space 
sat in the middle here and the trackers were on the outside so that I'd have a quick reference to them because I was finding I would forget to flip back to the tracker pages and fill them out. And from there I would lose track of the trackers and I'd lose track of the habits and I'd lose track of the mood tracking. So I thought it would be good to incorporate it all together here. And that did actually work really well. So good job me. I didn't end up sticking to it all that long because I didn't love the way that this affects the journal. Um, you can see I kind of try it again next month. We'll get to that. I did it a little differently, but didn't end up sticking to it. I've been experimenting with weeklies a lot this year. Still haven't quite found what I'm looking for. February, I thought I'll go back to basics. House store florals is kind of my comfort zone. So I thought let's, let's hang out here. And I wanted it to be quite minimal. I think this is so pretty. I'm very proud of how this came together. Initially, I'd planned to just do loose watercolor florals, but I got scared. <laughs> So I went back to kind of what I've done in previous journals where I just drew some flowers and then colored them in with markers, except instead of markers, I colored them in with watercolor. That said, I was really going through a bit of a journal slump here. I have a video about that too, actually. There's a link up here about some things that I was trying to pull myself out of it in the description as well, of course, links in all the places. You can see, even though I had my trackers right next to my weeklies in this case, I still didn't use them. Partly, maybe also I just didn't exercise in February, but mostly I, I think I just forgot to come back here. I did enjoy this kind of setup though, where I had my spending log also tucked into the weeklies so that it would again be something I would use more. And I did use the February spending log, but I didn't enjoy this folded page system because it makes the book so bulky. And I don't hate a bulky book, but I don't love it either. It does make, if you keep these folded closed, it does make the subsequent pages have a bit of a cliff in them, but you sort of feel like you're gonna fall off the edge there. So I'm actually just gonna fold these out for the rest of the flip through, cause that's just gonna keep the journal feeling a bit more stable. There we go. In between my monthly setups, I quite often have these extra bits where I'm just planning for something specific or I'm taking notes from a class. And then we're into March and I had such a good time setting this up. It's a little bit more cutesy than I typically go for in my own journal, but I loved it so much. I was inspired by a set of tea themed stickers that I got from the washi tape shop, but then I thought, I don't want to use their teacups and teapots. I want to try and paint them myself. And I used some pearlescent paint mixed in with my regular watercolors to get the kind of tonal range, but still have them be sort of shiny. And I love how it came together. It's so adorable. Definitely an uplifting place to be. And this is when I was really trying to get myself back into my journal, get back into a journal headspace. And I think it worked pretty well. I have somewhat used my trackers, which is always good. I'm still trying to hold on to this Dutch Door Weekly idea for Dear Life, but I think we're gonna abandon it when we get to April. Also, I was doing, actually, I guess I was basically daily logging here, I suppose, because I wasn't setting up my weekly in advance. I was just leaving enough space for each day. I would just do what was necessary for that day. And then I didn't use my journal for a while. So this is the first time I did anything close to memory keeping in my journal. I made this little sort of, this is what I did over this week when I didn't use my journal thing. And I really liked it. Isn't it cute? So that's something that uh, has come with me, which is kind of nice. And then for the last couple of days of March, when I picked up my journal again and went, oh, I've got way more space here than I think I need. I really went for it with some to-do lists, which is kind of funny. Um, and then my partner and I went on a little trip. So I've got a packing list here and an itinerary here and an empty spending log because by this point I had decided I was moving into a separate journal for that. So I wasn't going to fill it out and then have to blur or black out something else for no reason. In February, I went to an Akatar themed ball. You know how that's been a thing all over the world lately. I think this was the first one in Australia. My partner and I had a really good time getting dressed up. I made a little memory keeping spread here for it. I just had fun. In fact, I may have had more fun putting together the spread than I had actually at the ball, but that's always good. And here we have some travel memory keeping from our little trip away to Sydney and the Blue Mountains. It was a lovely weekend away. If you wanna see this coming together, I have some of this footage of setting up these pages in a vlog that I will link where everything is linked. We're not usually a weekends away kind of a couple. We're more of a save up a lot of money and go away for two to four weeks kind of couple. But this was a really nice little break and we have another 
small break coming up soon as well. So more things to journal about in my new journal. That makes me very happy. We're into April and I guess I felt like my last couple of themes were a bit of a cop out as far as the paint challenge. So I went, let's go hard. Let's try and paint a sunset backdrop. And originally I'd planned to draw my little dragons on here too, but then I thought let's get even more ambitious and make them really good by cutting them out with my Cricut instead. So that's where my tiny dragons came from. There is quite a bit of paint transfer from this side onto this side around here. I don't know if that would come off with an eraser. It might. Oh yeah, it actually kind of does. Oh, it actually really does. Okay, so that's good to know. This is not from the page being wet when I closed it or anything. I guess it's just from the book being closed with this kind of paint on it. There's even a little bit over here from my pen and that's come off all right too. Although I do now have some paint on my eraser. That's interesting. I hadn't realized that that was happening until now. Look, it's no masterpiece, but I do think I did an okay job on this. Again, I've including a spending log in the journal and then not using it because I'm like, but I think maybe I want to do this in a different book and that's fine. We've committed now. We know what's going on. I'm returning to a more traditional kind of weekly style here because I partly just had some paint to use up and so I wanted to make sure that I was getting a good chance to put some dragons and some clouds on the page, but also I was over those Dutch doors well and truly. So I think I ended up doing this four days to a spread system for the rest of the month and I didn't want to paint in my live streams because it's such a process and it makes me nervous to do that kind of stuff while people are watching. So I opted for some washi tape instead. Still gives the same feeling though, right? And then my stickers started to betray me, so I ended up drawing some of my dragons anyway after all of that. Very cute washies, but man, they're a lot to look at. A little bit more memory keeping. I went to a music festival. I saw some bands I really like. And I was having an adventure journal workshop. This was an idea that uh, Jesse, who owns Stash World, which is a lovely stationery store near me, and I worked on together where we came up with a journaling workshop that was kind of inspired by Dungeons and Dragons. It was really wonderful. It was so successful. It's something we'd like to do again in the future, but at the moment there are other things that have to take precedence. So watch this space if you're a Brisbaneite, and I think we would love to take this online. We just haven't quite worked out how that would work yet, so watch this space. These were just some spreads that I set up for us to photograph so that we could promote the event on social media and on Class Bento, where Jessie takes her bookings. I don't actually have a D&D &D character, this was just kind of something I threw together. But I think D&D sounds really fun. And this one's a page to celebrate the actual workshop because it was so much fun. I have one little photo of everybody working hard and just some pretty stuff around it. I've only done this quite recently because I didn't have this pen or this ink until recently. So I've retroactively filled out a lot of this stuff. These ones are from when a good friend of mine visited in April as well. My memory keeping stuff has gotten a bit out of order, but that's okay. I don't need it to be in order. I was there. And this one is just a spread about a Morris dancing side that I am part of, and I took that photo. It was in the paper, so <laughs> just something for me to enjoy in, in the future. They also got a lot of information wrong in that article, which is very funny. Nay, this is me getting so sick of this painting project that I just didn't want to do it anymore. Oh, look, I didn't even fully erase my pencil lines from my planning stages. Look at me go. I decided it wasn't cheating to just use paint markers instead of using paint generally, so I went with stamps and paint markers to get this kind of Portuguese tile system going on. I actually have a video not just setting this one up, but showing you the entire process of planning this theme from start to finish. So from having the idea, testing it out in a little like test page at the back of the journal, to fully realizing it and executing it, and planning everything out in pencil in between to make sure that it ended up the way I wanted it. Again, linked in the description. So many links to so many videos in the description of this one. A very unusual color scheme for me, but I really like it. The ones that always surprise me are the themes with a pop of yellow, because I always think that I don't like yellow, and then I use it, and I'm like, oh, I really like that yellow. <laughs> Go figure. But as you can see, actually using the pages didn't happen. May was crazy busy. I just struggled all the way through May. I don't know what to tell you. At least I used my content planner a little bit, although I've written my YouTube stuff in the Instagram column here, so 
<laughs> that sucks, but whatever. This is where I started getting into a weekly setup where I have six days to a spread and they just roll over. They started from whatever day the month started on and they ended on whatever day was six days after that. So this one goes from Wednesday to Monday, although I initially did the names of the days wrong. I must have done Monday here because I've got paper from this journal cut out and placed over the top with the correct days of the week. And I carried that on, I'd like to say all the way through May, but once again, you know, I wasn't using my journal very much. So I carried it through to the 18th and then I stamped a couple of spreads here that I've ended up using for memory keeping instead because I did not use them for weeklies at all. This was so much fun. I started Morris dancing in August of last year. So this was my first May Day and a May Day tradition for Morris dancers is that everybody goes to the local highest mountain peak and dances up the sun to make sure that the sun stays up through what in the Northern Hemisphere would be, I guess, the spring and summer. This was my first time dancing out for May Day and it was so much fun. And on this side is some memory keeping from a friend's baby shower, which the colors ended up going really well with her baby shower theme. So that's kind of lovely. Over here is my first dance out with a different Morris dancing set. Actually, I suppose Jacaranda was at this one as well. That's me, I'm in this photo. Usually I'm not in the photos of the Morris dancers because I'm the one taking them. So some notes about my first dance out with that Morris dancing side and a karaoke night for a friend's birthday. I love karaoke. Tell me your karaoke song in the comments. I was getting really overwhelmed at one point and I didn't have anything set up for me to get to work in so I just made this master to-do list. Really not aesthetic but my goodness did it help. Not everything has to be pretty to be helpful, you know. Please enjoy my little smiley faces here. That's my mom and my stepdad. Uh, they're very private people. They are not very internet uh, literate. They do not like to be on social media and I know they would not like to be on my YouTube channel so I've just popped little smiley faces over them there. But this was a spread I did at my Mother's Day workshop at Stash World, which is that same wonderful stationery store. We were all doing kind of a stick and sip Mother's Day thing and I was guiding the workshop but I also got to do a little bit of collaging for myself and I really like how this one came out. I promise you it looks cuter when my parents' faces are actually visible, but those are kind of cute too. A little bit more memory keeping here, Shakespeare in the Gardens with my Morris dancers. We had a Maypole, that's me. We're very out of order here because obviously we had like May Day back here and now we're doing things that were in April. I just, yeah, it's just the way it all washed out. <laughs> I can't be mad at it, it doesn't matter, it's all fun. Somebody lettered my name for me at Shakespeare in the Gardens too, which was really fun. I was very interested in this lady who was showing us like Shakespeare's times and how they wrote then. She was not ready for my level of interest. I was like, tell me everything about your pens. And this is again from when my friend visited back in April. We had some flippy outy bits earlier also from that. So she's got two pages, but they're quite spread out. And then we're into June, the very last monthly setup in this journal. I guess because I felt like my May setup was a bit of a cop out, I've gone really hard into the watercolors here. I followed a Skillshare tutorial to learn how to paint these ditzy florals. And I think this is so cute with the gold as well. This is probably one of my favorite themes that I've done for 2024 so far. Much like February, Pastel flowers and simplicity were kind of the vibes here. I loved using the gold watercolor to do all of my line work for this setup instead of a pen. That was really fun. Maybe I should do that again. Isn't it funny how I was like, oh, I can't wait to not paint anymore. And then immediately in a new journal that doesn't have watercolor paper, I'm like, I want to paint again now. No, <laughs> calm down Erin, rein it in. I have been using my habit trackers, although I didn't end up setting habits for the last three because I only really wanted to track three, so it's fun. Not sure how I'm feeling about the goals, favorites, and musings section lately. I'm not sure if that's something I'm gonna continue in my own journal. I'm not sure I'm using it enough. And I missed some videos in June because I was tired, but we're back on track now. We're doing okay. I loved this weekly so much when I set it up and I was so keen to be setting up more of them on live stream, but life got to me. And check out what this next one looks like. We, what was that? The Saturday the 8th, and then we skipped to Monday the 24th, and no decoration, just because I needed a weekly. <laughs> and here we were. And then I didn't even use it that much, which is kind of funny. We're almost at the end of the journal now. I've got a little memory keeping page for a gift from a friend. I have a bit of space here to do a little bit more memory keeping over here. Just haven't got to this one yet. And then 
I have some fountain pen ink swatches because I'm getting into fountain pens lately. I went to a fountain pen meetup, which was so much fun, met so many wonderful people, and also my lovely Judy, who I know from Sticker Hangs at Stash World. When I mentioned I was interested in getting into fountain pens, brought all of these beautiful inks for me to try like decanted me little samples of them all so I've swatched them here some of them are truly incredible like I I'm gonna get so lost in this world I'm sure and then these ones I picked up from lovely sweeties at the fountain pen meetup as well haven't inked a pen yet well actually that's a lie I've inked this one I've inked half of this one this is the Tom Studio Lumos Duo which is kind of a fountain pen on crack I suppose uh, We'll talk about that another time, but it's still very overwhelming to me, but I can see myself really getting involved in this fountain pen kind of community. I also want to do another spread here for another little outing with friends, and then we're into my test pages at the back of the journal. So something I always like to do is have a little test run of a theme and ensure that everything that I plan to use is actually going to work with everything else I plan to use before I commit to it, because what if you start and it looks bad, you know? This one you can see in that May uh, planning video that I mentioned earlier. Originally it was going to be a very different thing to where it ended up. This one is obviously for April, because we start from the back of the journal and work backwards for this one. March, testing out my little uh, Teapots and teacups. I tried these in an actual art journal first before I brought them in here because slightly different paper Still watercolor paper, but this is 160 GSM, so it's thinner than most my January test run and Over here was my beginning of the journal test run and all of this is from the fountain pen meetup where people just kept handing me their pens and telling me what was inked in each one and I would just write something to see if I could get a feel for what kind of nibs I like, what kind of inks I like, what kind of pens I like. I still couldn't tell you any of those things to be honest, but I would just write whatever was being said around me or whatever came to mind. So there are some quotes in here from people around me, like a buttered dolphin is what one of the gentlemen refers to some of his pens as when they feel like they write very smoothly. Love that. Something about this being Neil Gaiman's pen, I guess it's the one that he likes to write with. I actually had forgotten to take a pencil case with me, so I'd forgotten my own pen, so my friend Jackie very kindly lent me one of hers for me to pretend was mine. And of course it's not a fountain pen made up without a nice big smudge of ink that got onto my hand because I was actually swatching things earlier and uh, got some stains on me right now. Look at this one. This pen looks like it was devised by aliens. Wow. Then we have the back cover. I've got a pocket in here. Oh! With place cards from my friend's wedding that are gonna go on one of those memory keeping spreads that I haven't done yet. And that is a wrap on my 2024 journaling adventures for the first half of the year. Let's have a mini review of this journal, shall we? This is a fantastic option if you are someone who likes to paint in your journal. It has held up very nicely. I did notice actually, just as we were beginning this flip through that back here, it does look like the signatures are starting to tear away from the binding at the very front a bit here, but honestly, it doesn't look like it's about to break or anything, so maybe it's fine. I think the paper holds up to paint really beautifully. I don't think you have to worry too much about a page buckling, like once it dries down, it dries down pretty flat in my experience. I think they're really well made. I think they're doing something that not a lot of other journal companies are offering. I really like that the paper is not a bright white. I really like my pages to be a little creamier or a little more gray. And I do also love that the dot grid here is sort of a sepia brown color. It's not a black, it's not gray. It's kind of soft and nice and I like that. What I don't like is the page texture. So I get that this is a thing with a lot of watercolor papers is that they have a bit of texture and that's usually quite a beautiful thing. And I don't disagree, but I did find I ended up ruining quite a few of my Sakura Pigma Micron pens because something about the texture of this paper and writing with these just kind of carves up and tears up the nib of this pen, of these pens rather, because, you know, in several sizes. So. That's a shame. The nibs on these ones wear down quite quickly anyway, but you can see here the text looks kind of strange. That's actually kind of what forced me to start using fountain pens is because I needed something that could stand up to this kind of paper. I really didn't enjoy the paper. I really didn't end up necessarily enjoying the challenge that I set for myself. I don't think that that means this is a bad journal by any means. I think it's a very good journal. I think if you're someone who likes to paint in your journal all the time, 
it would be an incredible choice, but I won't be buying another one, it's just not a good fit for me. That's it for the first half of the year in this journal. We are, besides those couple of memory keeping pages, all done with this one. I have already, of course, started on my next journal. It is this one, it needs a sticky roll. Bear with me. <laughs> this one's from Tifosi, it's their Bodhi A5 dot grid journal. It has 196 pages, which is a lot more than I'm used to, so we'll have to see if it ends up as chunky as this one did. This one I already have the initial setup and July on my channel, and I'll be sharing my August setup in this one this week as well, so look out for that. In case you'd like to keep talking about journals, because that's always one of my favorite things to do, there's a link up here on the top right corner of the screen to a video that's walking you through my full journal lineup for the second half of 2024, and underneath that there is a link to a video that's a little vlog showing you how I interact with my stationery over the course of a whole month. Catch you again soon.